please note that this video contains spoilers. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast, so while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. Sinister movie thoughts. I really like the whole Bugul thing. I, I'm not sure if it's, if they got that name from a real thing or if they based it like directly upon a real pagan god, but it feels like it could be pagan mythology. And what I really like about it is that it, it is this good, understandable kind of superstition. It's it's the kind where, you know, you, you stop and think, well, why why do people believe this, or why did people believe it anyway? And really, it makes perfect sense to think that there would be, that, that the, the evil, the things that scare us the most, have more power when we draw them, when we deal with them all the time, because they're in your mind, if, if every time you turn around you see another drawing of something that really scares you, that's going to give it more power over you. Whereas if you get rid of these drawings, then it won't, and, and the idea that children would somehow be, you know, important to this deity, with the idea that, you know, Children tend to have a more fantastical view of the world. They have not yet fully grasped that, you know, the supernatural is not real. And so they might draw something that would horrify adults. And to the children, it's just, it's just processing these, these ideas of, but there's a monster under my bed, or you know, that old nasty house on the corner of the street, that, that, a witch definitely lives there, you know, these ideas. So, I, I felt like it was, it was a very credible mythology. I would have liked if the movie went into how it sort of started, because the first murder was, you know, filmed with the Super 8 camera. And then it just went on from there. You also have to wonder how that first family, quote unquote, died because it seemed like I might have misunderstood this, but the, the way I understand it, house one has a family die in it. Family two moves into house one, stay there for a while, watch, you know, the father watches the, v, the Super 8 film, after a while they get freaked, move back to house 2. House 2 and has a murder of the family, and the, the of the family 2, obviously, and thus, you know, family 3 is going to move into house 2, and so on and so on. So what about that first family, because no one had already died there. So, or, or at least how did it become entangled in, were, were there drawings of, was, was it an old Indian burial ground, or an old pagan burial ground, or something like that. I would have liked for the film to go into that, but I really love that it's this loop, that it actually, it feels obvious when you look back on it, and I did figure out just, just before I saw it happen, what it was going to end with this this movie, but it's a really great way to end it. It is this, it, it has this sort of classic tragedy feel to it, where it's, it's very inevitable, is a good word. It's, you know, that Agent Smith is on to something where basically the, the lead character does something or has something 
happen to him, and he just stays with that. It, it can't. He's, he's too obsessed. He, he won't let go. He keeps being warned. Sheriff tells him, don't, don't do this. We don't want you, this happening here. You know, if everyone, to the, the wife says, you know, don't, don't get the, the ch both children warn him in their own ways, you know, by, you know, with the night terrors and drawing the, and, and he keeps seeing Bagul more and more and increasingly terrifying. And he just will not. And only at the very end does he give up and, and move, and by then it's too late. Bugul has taken power, has, has taken possession of his daughter, and the family is going to die. Because he did not give up, because he was attracted by violence in the first place. As I mentioned in the review, humankind's attraction to violence. We're drawn towards violence. And that is basically a very natural thing. It's, it's a, there's an instinct, to, an instinctive need to, if, if there's violence around us, we want to find out, is the violence over? Could this violence befall me? You know, things like that. But it is also a very dark thing, and it's something that we do feel bad about. We, we, we feel guilty about being attracted to violence. And so the movie works well for the viewer because the viewer, consciously or otherwise, is feeling guilty about being attracted to the violence. We, we, we want him to put on the next Super 8 film. And when, he, when he's watched the, the final one, some part of us wishes that there was another film. And by the end of the movie, there is. The... And, and I uh, like the, the ritual aspect of it as well with, as we find out, it's actually the missing children who killed the family, which also explains how they managed to drug the family to, to kill them. You know, how, how, do you, how does a stranger manage to drug every single person, you know? That's, that's some kind of planning, but no, it was just, it was one of the children of the family. They, they could easily do it, and, and you see her early on, you know, learning how to make the coffee, and then later he finds his, that was his coffee, right, that she drugged, I, th I think, and that, good night, daddy, oh, man. Anyways, so it's, as, as he says, you know, you know it's, it's initiation. It's an initiation ritual, as the, the college guy says. CG for short. CG says, and, and when CG says that, that's when I think, oh my, it's the children. It's, it's the children that have been, that have disappeared, that are doing the, the killing. And the, it's, it's their initiation, it's, that's how Bugul, you know, devours them, as it's uh, expressed. And, excuse me, yeah, just this, the, the, the ritual, the, the, the child grabs the Super 8 camera and films the whole thing and kills their family, and then finally gets in front of the camera and does the shush movement and then that part is edited out which is why he has to splice it all together there at the end so he can watch the extended endings that was also a nice clever touch that's that's such a modern thing to have an extended ending and and this sort of mixing of you know you have super 8 but then you have this extended ending which is something we think of with you know dvd and blu-ray as, what is that, like 15 years old at the most or something, this, this entire concept of Super 8, obviously older. And just, it, it was just so devastating to see her, Ashley I think was her name, that's what I'm going to go with anyway, 
she was so cute at first, and, and that's what the film does really well, as I was just saying in the review, perverts these innocent things. You have the Super 8 films becoming snuff films, and then you have these sweet, innocent children. You, you see them in the, actually, are they in the other films? Anyway, yeah, and, and finally, actually, when did Ashley even videotape the family hanging out, that seems like, what would they have been doing, chopping wood, since she uses an axe? Anyway, I guess that's a minor detail. Maybe, maybe Bagul is getting a little lazy, maybe he's not. You know what, let's not be so theatrical with this one. I need the blood of humans, so just chop up mommy and daddy, would you actually be a good girl now? Anyway, yeah, see, seeing her there and, and realizing that he's been drugged, he wakes up and he sees the mother lying there across the... As, at first I thought it was going to be that they were going to be like burned, oh, I guess that also already happened in the car, because he was lying by the fireplace, but yeah, and then she's standing there with the axe and this creepy expression on her face. Yeah. Now, the... One of the really, really effective examples of the movie perverting something innocent into something horrifying was the Stephanie climbing down from the, the tree. That, that's, that's one thing, that's the big reveal, and you're like, it was the children all along, but then she goes and grabs the foot and leg of one of her parents, and she uses it like it was the tire swing, and man, I nearly lost it there. That was unbelievable. I, I can't. Amazing. Just, that image is gonna haunt me for a while. Anyway, that does bring me into the devoured children. They were used a little too much. When they're doing ballet across the house behind Ellison's back, yeah, that just looked silly. I'm, I'm sorry, it worked when you just saw the, I guess, maybe Stephanie's face? right behind Ellison, but then you saw it for like a couple of seconds in a row, and it was like, okay, we're, we're getting used to it, it's losing effect, please, please go, go to something else, and then she dances away, and all this, and one of them like runs into the wall, disappears into the wall, and it's like, okay, we, we know how ghosts work, S Scott, stop, you're, you're doing it wrong, and I think part of it is the, the makeup, Yeah, I, I don't know how, uh, a nice way to put it, it didn't look good. It, it was especially, it was one of them that had like these big bags under his eyes. And it seemed like fakely put in there, that just looked really bad. I guess it was supposed to look creepy, but yeah. And that, the, I didn't particularly mind Bagul myself. But some people on the internet have compared, have, have said that he looks like Michael Jackson. And I suppose I can kind of see that. And since the kids don't age, I guess he's taking them off to Never Never Land. I will say that most of the time the devoured children appearances were great them up in the in the little attic room turning looking at the super eight and then turning and shh, and then you see the the Bagul face on the super eight and then it's right in front of you oh my god that was terrifying and that other time where you saw Bagul out in the yard he's like holding up the picture and you see the Bagul face, and then he lowers the picture, and the Bagul face is still there, and he's like, 
Oh, okay. And then there's still a face there, and then there's this kid. That's a pretty big warning sign that he ignored there. You know, that, that was part of the... He's, he's too obsessed to deal with, to, to... I mean, he shouldn't have gone there in the first place. He should have let, he should have let the police just handle the investigation, but... You know, and then, yeah, his, his kids are warning him that the, the, these night terrors, 12 years old, and he's like running out of the house and hiding in the bushes. That is just not right. I, I guess it was him trying to hide, maybe, from Bagul and the like. So it, was, it was some sort of... You know, somehow the animals are always the first to know danger. I mean, uh, children, children, that's, yeah. I suppose that more or less covers it. A little bit more on the, on the devoured children. The whole thing with Stephanie climbing out of the tree, great reveal. And the, the thing with it, did, didn't we see the salt being thrown to that like she, she's hidden, and we sort of see the saw working, and then we see something being thrown, and then the branch falls, and it lifts them up, and then when we see the extended ending, she climbs down out of the tree, and uses the swing, and then goes up to the camera, shh, and then we see the one with the kid. How did that kid pull his parents in? I guess Bugul granted him extra strength, extra human strength. I'm sure Superman could have pulled it in up heavy. Okay, Superman could have, but he's Superman. Except on Wednesdays. And then there's that kid who sliced the, the next... He does like a little fencing routine before he puts the knife down. I get that they needed to do something creepy with it because it's just... It's a little bland if he just goes up and puts the knife down. Might I suggest that he do, like, movement, you know, just knife in the air so it doesn't touch him, and then he puts it down instead? I think that would have, you know, not been silly. I suppose that might more or less cover it. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.